And there is only one place to start this Monday lunchtime, and that is, of course, with the big news that broke on Saturday afternoon with the exit of David De Gea after 12 years and 545 games in United Colours. His time at Old Trafford is finally up. It is the end of an era. Samuel, first of all, obviously, it was, it was the headline news over the weekend. What what did you make to it? It should have been announced a week before, really, when his contract expired. It, United should have been more decisive in the way they went about it. Ty was right with his piece and that they, they made the right decision but went about it in the wrong way. And I suppose it was kind of in keeping with the way it was handled that a few minutes after De Gea confirmed that he was leaving United for good. Uh, a United staff member uh, suggested that we should prepare ourselves for something on, on David's channels when the message, the word was already out. De Gea had already posted that update. So uh, United will look back on that and think we, we could have we could have dealt with it better. But football doesn't work that way. Uh, Bruno Fernandes said that, you know, I think a lot of people would agree with him that De Gea deserved to have a formal send-off. But again, those those farewells, they very rarely happen. Ryan Giggs, when he played for United for the last time, he was player manager, probably the club's, well, certainly the club's most decorated player, uh, most successful player, most appearances. But it wasn't put out beforehand that he was definitely leaving. Uh, you don't always get a North Korean style send off like Sir Alex Ferguson did with 70,000 red, red flags being waved. Steve Bruce, Brian Robson, Yap Stan, David Beckham, Roy Keane, you know, the list goes on of players who've left somewhat abruptly or or under a cloud. And also, would it have been the right thing to do in, in terms of preparation for the FA Cup final? That's that's another questionable, um, you know, that's, that's something else to question. But ultimately, De Gea didn't get the send-off that he probably would have liked. And unfortunately, his, his United career is, is bookended by... Mistakes against Manchester City at Wembley, the, the 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 last one obviously being particularly costly in that FA Cup final, but it, it doesn't paint a, a fair picture whatsoever of what was a great career at the club. And United did extremely well to get 12 years out of him. It looked like they were only going to have him for four years because he did want to join Real Madrid in 2015. So to have kept him for three times as long as that uh, is, is some going. He was world-class between, I'd say, between 2013 and to 2018 or 20 going into 2019, I don't think there was a better goalkeeper in the world. I'm sure Manuel Neuer acolytes would say that he was he was a better goalkeeper, but Neuer, he did have the benefit of being in the comfort zone of the Bayern Munich penalty area where he wasn't particularly busy or certainly not as busy as De Gea was. And De Gea was a very busy goalkeeper for, for much of his time at United. And I don't think I've ever seen a goalkeeper astound with the saves he made. He would save... He would save goals when the ball was literally past him, and and that did happen a few times in his career. And it's very very difficult to uh, whittle down a list of his of his best of really. If if they wanted to release a DVD of it, it would probably be longer than The Godfather because there were so many great saves during his time at United, and that's what he'll be remembered for. It's it's a pity for him that he. he Certainly played a, a lot longer for the club than Peter Schmeichel or Edwin van der Sar did, but he never had the benefit of playing behind um, as good as defences as, as they did. Van der Sar in particular played behind three world-class defenders for much of his time at United in Evra, Ferdinand and Vidic. Uh, Schmeichel, OK, United, good defensive side though they were and they had some brilliant defenders, but you wouldn't have necessarily said they were they had as high ceilings as Ferdinand and Vidic did, but... Schmeichel played in, well, possibly the best United side of all time. A lot of people would say the 93-94 team uh, was actually a better team than the treble winning team. He, he ultimately played in probably the two best United sides they've ever been. So you're not always going to be uh, as, as busy as, as De Gea was. And I suppose the one little pang of regret for De Gea might be that when he came to United, Fernand and Vidic, they, they were starting to creak and there were signs of wear and tear there. And he never really played behind consistently great defenders during his time. And just at the point where they got a partnership, which in Varane and Martinez is the best since Fernand and Vidic, his limitations were so renowned that United really had to move him on. And they should have been more decisive about it. I don't think Ten Hag should have been as um, I mean, there was a lot of face saving going on in public where he kept on repeatedly saying, I want to keep De Gea. He said it often enough that I don't think he was lying. 
but there was definitely a shift towards the end of the season and even when United won very handsomely against Real Betis one of the biggest takeaways from the evening was just how bad De Gea's kicking was and how problematic it was and even in Ten Hag's final press conference of the season at Wembley uh, in, the, in that grand lecture uh, like theatre room at the National Stadium the last question centred on De Gea's kicking and he, he admitted it was an issue and here we are five or six weeks later and De Gea is no longer United player and he's not going to play for United again so the right decision has been made uh, it's it's not I don't think it's as ruthless as some have suggested it as I mean ultimately United were trying to get him tied down on a new contract so that immediately undermines the, the ruthlessness of it but they have made the right decision because I mean, as, as I wrote at the weekend in, in, in the feature on De Gea's time at United, that was a decision two years in the making. The previous permanent manager wanted uh, to, to phase out De Gea two years ago, and his goalkeeping was an issue back then. It was a goalkeeper. It, it was an issue. Sorry, um, going back three or four years. I mean, he, he had a much worse run in in 2018, 19, and then he got a new contract in the summer, and you just wondered if history was going to repeat itself, but the setup at United and certainly the manager uh, is is a lot more ruthless even though as I said it, it is undermined by the, the club's wish and an and attempt to, to tie De Gea down on a new contract Listen to the full Manchester is Red podcast on your preferred podcast platform now